Okay. I hope voice is clear. Yeah. You know, why come Satyagraha? And I, the coming year, both Tamil Nadu and Kerala are, cel are together celebrating 2024, the centenary year of the Vaikam Satyagraha. Everybody know who is the hero of Vaikam Satyagraha. Generally, it means at least our students for whom history is completed, they know. Who is the hero of Vaikam Satyagraha? Hero of Vaikam Satyagraha. So, hero of uh, Vaikam Satyagraha is uh, Kelapan. Kelapan. Even Kelapan is also called as Gandhi of Kerala. We have discussed in our routine classes. Yes, okay. Even Madhavan is not wrong, but more predominantly Kelapan. So, you may encounter a question from this, but not asking like this one, like who is the hero of Kelapan? So they will ask which of the following statements are correct with regard to the Vaikam Satyagraha. Like participants, like participants. Even Mahatma Gandhi also visited that region. The adjoining Tamil Nadu backward class leaders like E.V. Ramaswamy Nayakar also participated. Even Akalis, that is Sikh community also supported this Satyagraha. And it is related to what? It is related to what? It was in the princess states of Travancore where the upper class people never allowed the lower class people into the temples, especially Egawas. Many social disabilities were imposed on the Egawas. Who are Egawas in Kerala? They are toddy tappers. Toddy tappers. And finally, um, the ruler was forced to make a law in favor of the oppressed classes or depressed classes so they so you will get the questions in the statement forms no question of no question of uh, um, questions like uh, before 2012 where they used to ask only first battle of panipat or second battle of panipat in which year now only they will ask which of the following is true with regard to first battle of panipat Okay, please try to have a comment on this uh, topic and even in mains also they may ask about uh, any backward class movement. So giving importance for the backward class movement. That is very important. It is how you have to have a comment on the question. Yes, it was a historic non-violent movement against untouchability and the discrimination was made on Egawa. It is a temple entry moment. The kingdom of Travancore had a rigid and oppressive caste system. The caste subjected to oppression was Egawas. And the place, so the place was near the, see they were not allowed to enter the Vaikam Mahadeva temple. Vaikam Mahadeva. If you study the concept with more information, so definitely you will be able to remember and it was led by T.K. Madhavan and K. Sevamanan and Congress leader and educationalist Kelapan. Kelapan is called as the Kerala Gandhi. 
now which person is called as gandhi of telangana online students which person is called as gandhi of telangana yes aparna ji bhupati krishnamurthi is the gandhi of telangana and who is ambedkar of telangana ambedkar of telangana yes bs venkatrao is the ambedkar of telangana why i am why i am revising means it is in on uh, june 11th you are having the group one films and uh, it is great in my career of this institution i am into this business since 2003 and we have taken over this institution in 2006 or 7 i have not seen so prelims conducting for two times Sometimes they have cancelled mains because of some or other reasons. Okay, the, okay, yes. Okay. Now, Mahadeva Temple in Vaikam on March 30th, 1924, volunteers from three different communities were sent to walk on the prohibited roads each day. Periyar, E.V. Ramaswamy Nayakar was requested to lead the campaign. And members of forward caste marched from Travancore to the Royal Palace at Tiruvannathapuram in a show of solidarity for the social reform. Even upper class people, few sections of upper class people also supported. Akali six from Punjab gave their support by opening a community kitchen. You know what is meant by community kitchen in a Sikh situation, Langar. If you go to any Gurudwara, you will have this Langar. And where only vegetarian food is served. Only vegetarian food is served. Okay? Yes. Okay. And you know, even we are having a prominent uh, person, Sri Narayana Guru, gave support to this moment. And even Mahatma Gandhi arrived at Vaikam in March 1925 to settle the issue. And finally, the movement was success. The movement paved the way for the historic temple and Sri proclamation 1936 by the local ruler. It was one of the most non-violent struggles against caste oppression and discrimination. If in if you encounter any essay, the success of non-violence, you can also quote this as the example. It is a philosophical essay. Non-violence is a philosophy. If you encounter any philosophical essay, even you can quote this as an example. Of course, Indian independence is an example, at least partially. But many people accept it has 100% example. Yeah. Now, scheme for refugees from Pakistan. So, especially Sikhs and Hindus who are so coming back to India and who want to stay in the present Punjab, that is a, a Punjab part of India or Jammu and Kashmir, they are given a rehabilitation package by central government completely it is funded by the central government and uh, the amount is 5.5 lakh rupees so actually now the way it is disbursed is uh, at a snail's pace means uh, slowly slowly the i mean the beneficiaries are identified so many people say that it is because of the corruption they are i mean officers are uh, i mean demanding the corruption and also the I mean, the refugees are unable to provide the identity, like refugee card, etc. So, of course, corruption is a common thing. So, which ministry is responsible for that? Ministry of Home Affairs disburses the fine, while the Jammu and Kashmir government selects beneficiaries. 100% assistance from the central government. Started in 2018. They have identified nearly 5,000 Hindu and Sikh families. Amount is 5.5 lakhs. 
and uh, 70% of them are Dalits. 70% of them are Dalits. And they are given only for 9 or 3 families. Able to produce, the main reason is the people are unable to produce the refugee cards. They are unable to identify themselves or they are unable to prove their identity. Now, Eraviculum National Park gets a Fernernium. Means a botanical garden where ferns are grown. Ferns. So even once we have discussed like Ozola. Azola is a fern. Azola is a fern. Of course, just I am deviating the, from the topic. Azola, it is a fern. It is grown in the rice field, that is paddy field. Because for first 45 days, the paddy fields will be flooded. Even more than 45 days also. So, on this water, this fern is released, Azola. And it will grow like anything. It will grow at a faster rate. And even there are many benefits. This can be consumed by the cattle. It is nutritious. So if you grow Azola in all the paddy fields, automatically we will also overcome the fodder crisis. So it is how we have to use the technology. And when this fern will cover this water, even there will be uh, minimizing of the evaporation losses from the paddy fields. And second thing, when the weeds are... Uh, not getting the sun rays. There is no question of growth of weeds. Because they need uh, sun rays to have the photosynthesis. Okay. So, with the with the Azola fern, there is a lot of benefit. In the same way, there are many be many benefits from the from these kind of ferns. ferns and, uh, and accordingly, a botanical garden was uh, initiated in the national, uh, I mean, Eraviculum National Park. Actually, now what happened? They will not ask this question. Adjoining things they will ask. A fernarium is a type of botanical garden or greenhouse that specializes in cultivating and displaying various species of ferns. Ferns are part of the epiphytic family. What is the meaning of epiphytes? Epiphytes, which grow on other tree. Okay? Epiphytes. They grow on the other tree, epiphytes. Okay? You can see many trees on the tree, like lich lichens, moses, etc. Try to remember, of course, I am not the biological sir, but still. They grow naturally in a soilless condition. Of course, they will take the food from the leaching of the host on, on which tree they are lying. By using the tree, they will. Uh, get their food and uh, about Erviculum National Park it was declared as a sanctuary in 1975 a later a national park in 1978 with the intention of, of protecting the indigenous population of Nilgiri Thar try to remember Erviculum National Park in this park which animal species is preserved that is very important they will not ask this uh, Fernisium. So, highly endangered mountain goat that is Nilgiri Thar. Nilgiri Thar. In the last classes of our, uh, I mean, routine classes, we have discussed about the Silent Valley project. In Silent Valley project, which uh, species is uh, preserved? We have discussed, I think, if I am not wrong, in the last class only. In Silent Valley project, which which animal is preserved? Yes, good online students. Lion tailed makaku. Okay. Yes. Ticket, 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 ticket. Try to remember. They will give in the mass the following. Which park, which species is preserved? Don't expect direct questions. One side, four options. Other side, 12 options. <clears> okay. <throat> Nila Kurinji, the flower that blooms once in 12 years also grows here. And uh, the highest peak, 
what is the highest peak of peninsular india what is the highest peak of peninsular india madam kinaragar highest peak of peninsular india ఓకే అండి అన్నయ్య ముడి అన్నయ్య ముడి మీన్స్ ఎలిఫెంట్ హెడ్ ఓకే ఇఫ్ యూ కన్సిడర్ దిస్ కేరళ పార్ట్ ఓన్లీ కేరళ పార్ట్ యు ఆర్ హ్యావింగ్ ద వెస్టర్న్ ఘాట్స్ అండ్ అన్నయ్య ముడి లైస్ ఇన్ ద అన్నమలై హిల్స్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద హైట్ ఆఫ్ అన్నయ్య ముడి ఇట్ ఈస్ ద హైయెస్ట్ పీక్ ఆఫ్ ఫెరెన్సార్ ఇండియా హైయెస్ట్ పీక్ ఆఫ్ వెస్టర్న్ ఘాట్స్ what is the height of annai mudi yes is online good girls 2695 meters 2695 meters okay yes so it is the highest peak of south india peninsular india you have to remember don't run along with the question this is the annamalai hills again what is the highest peak of nilgiris it is the doda betta dora betta with a height of 2637 meters of course when you come to the uh peninsular india you are having other two mountain peaks vindhya and satpura and vindhya and satpura are joined by which hills vindhya and satpura are joined by which hills okay yes maikala range and what is the highest peak of vindhya and satpura himabindu garu yes 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 see it is how you people are revising hmm? in less than almost all two months of course very nearly two months you are going to write the group one prelims and even before that many many of our students will write the upsc prelims highest peak of vindhya and satpuras nobody even from online also yes good girl himabindu 1351 meters dubgar 1351 meters in satpura range satpura 7 sat means 7 okay yes so even this is all important for our prelims now the highest peak south of the himalayas the annai mudi is located here the meaning of annai mudi means elephant's head and uh, just now we have discussed the importance of silent valley project it is uh, it is uh, it is preserving the endangered uh, species the lion tailed macaque and last class we have discussed about the threat to membanadu and astamudi lakes now india celebrates 50 successful years of project tiger and uh, even we we were awarded uh, a international award for doubling the 
tiger population of course we will discuss even we have discussed earlier once again we will discuss and my question is in which national park project tiger was started in which national project sorry in which national park project tiger was started yes good offline students jim corbett yes jim corbett jim corbett then 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 in which national park there are large number of tigers or sorry which is the biggest tiger reserve biggest tiger reserve biggest tiger reserve in india biggest tiger reserve Sri Salem Nagar Sagar is the biggest. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Good offline girls. The Indian government will officially mark the 50th year of Project Tiger. And you have to remember, it was initiated in India on April 1st, 1973 in Jim Corbett National Park, Uttarakhand. Definitely, you will encounter this question. Yes. What is the objective? To preserve the tiger and uh, it is centrally sponsored scheme Bragg tiger is the centrally sponsored scheme under the ministry of environment forest and climate change implementing agency national tiger conservation authority actually i am expecting this question for mains either upscr telangana and also andhra pradesh public service commission what are the steps taken by the government to preserve tiger Yes. Now headquarter, it is a, it is headquartered at New Delhi. Okay. And uh, the Tiger Task Force, it is statutory body under the Wildlife Protection Act, 1972. Okay. It is super uh, states covered. 18 states in India with 54 tiger reserves. Guru Gasidas National Park and the Tamur Pingla Wildlife Sanctuary in Chhattisgarh being the latest. They will ask about these latest tiger reserves. They will not ask about uh, when it was started. Which of the following statements are true with regard to Project Tiger? Automatically, Tiger will come into your examination hall. Okay? Now. <coughs> yeah. Remember, World Tiger Day, 29th July, 29th July, World Tiger Day. And uh, India will officially mark the 50th year of Project Tiger on 9th April, that is tomorrow. You have to remember the scientific name, Panthera tigris. It is, a, it is listed as endangered. In Wildlife Protection Act, it is in Schedule 1. Inside, it, it is in the first appendix. And tigers are the largest cat species and is both the flagship and umbrella species. Numbers. According to Tiger Census of 2019, India has 2967 tigers of which 526 are in MP. Okay. Subspecies. Of course, there are many subspecies, including Bengal, Bengal tiger. Now, largest tiger reserve, Nagarjun, Sri Salem. Sorry, Nagarjun Sagar, Sri Salem, Tiger Reserve, AP. Now, actually, it is divided into Two parts. One is Amrabad. Other is Nagarun Sagar Sri Salem. Okay. Yes. Now, smallest tiger reserve, Boar Tiger Reserve in Maharashtra. Highest density of tigers, Jim Corbett National Park. For two things, it is important. First, initiated in Jim Corbett National Park, and even highest density of tigers in the same place. Okay. Now. Of course, when you come to the achievement, our numbers has increased. The number of tigers in India has increased from 1827 in 1970s to around 2967, with a 30% rise in population in the last years. Nine tiger reserves covering 18,200 square kilometers in nine states to currently, and even it is said that in some regions, the place where tigers are there, there the forest cover has also increased. Yes. 
and we have discussed about the uh, two times tiger and even we have discussed which uh, which which national park was awarded as um, i mean uh, uh, honoring their uh, work uh, to double the tiger population it is satyamangalam yes satyamangalam no issue as hunting as hunting was <coughs> banned to save tigers <coughs> the population of many other animals started increasing yes because even they were also saved if you if you protect the tiger automatically other species will also be protected global tiger i mean population and uh, you have to remember india is home to more than 70% of global tiger population it is great achievement they may give in the statement and you, we sometimes think that it may be wrong so be specific on such issues and challenges you know poaching people kill tiger for various articles i mean and belong tiger like its nails and also skin etc body parts conflict with forest rights act say actually forest right act recognizes rights of various tribes so automatically in, in um, some places they are getting a conflict and even actually what is happening many tigers are leaving their enclosures and coming outside so always they will face uh, risk when they come on the roads they may get hit by the any carriage yes and again man animal conflict and we have discussed you know cop 19 sites cop 19 the 19th meeting of conference of the parties cop to the convention of international trade in endangered species of wild wild fauna and flora sorry wild fauna and flora so in appendix 1 2 3 they will categorize which animal species or plant species are banned for a trade okay and even they will permit sometimes suppose if that is used for any scientific purposes so all these are mentioned in the appendix 1 2 3 and this meeting was held at the panama of course last year and why i am getting this old information is india's shisham dalbergia siso is included in appendix 2 what is this india shisham what is a normal Uh, name or what is the commercial name which we use uh, in india shisham what is shisham what is shisham tree locally with what name we will call nobody yes definitely nobody it is rosewood highly highly used in the manufacture of the uh furniture and handicrafts so by this exemption automatically we will get opportunity to export okay because indian handicrafts are having lot of value in the uh foreign countries yeah india sisham dalberia siso they may ask in the examination especially for ts psc because uh snt part even there is such kind of uh, syllabus last time they have asked about the sarbaganda brahmi amla yes thereby requiring to follow the site rule a relief was provided by using the site rules for export of dalbergia siso based product this is expected to boost indian handicraft exports and even the conference has accepted a proposal to include sea cucumbers telenota in appendix 2 yes it is organism it is looking like cucumber only so try to remember this they will give in the form of statements see nowadays uh, the number of questions from science and technology environment ecology are more an analysis published by the wildlife conservation society india this september showed that sea cucumbers were the most frequently trafficked trafficked marine species in india between 15 to 21 
we shall see its image such that we will remember. Yes. Okay. Sea cucumbers are echinoderms from the class Holothuriodia. They are marine animals with a leathery skin and an elongated body containing a single branched gonad. Sea cucumbers are found on the seafloor worldwide. Okay. Yes. Have a look on this. Now, and Tamil Nadu had recorded the highest number of marine wildlife seizures, means by the police. Yes. India's proposal for induction of freshwater turtle, Batugar Kachuga, red crown roof turtle, earned wide, wide support of the parties in Cove 19 of sites. It was widely appreciated by the parties and well accepted when introduced. Try to remember this also. Now, India said that you have to include this into the sites list such that it can be preserved. Try to remember this. Freshwater turtle, Batugar Kachuga. Now, Operation Turt Shield, India's efforts to curb wildlife crime was appreciated. So, steps taken by the government to preserve wildlife. And why we have to preserve the wildlife? So, uh, you have to remember all this. Wildlife will increase the biodiversity. They will strengthen the food chain. Okay? India also, and even many are having the medicinal value also. India also alerted that many of the species of turtles and freshwater tortoise which are recognized as critically endangered, vulnerable to near to threatened are already included in wildlife protection. No issue now. India has decided not to vote against a proposal to reopen the international trade in ivory at the ongoing conference. This statement is very important. Yeah, they wanted to initiate the trade in ivory. India opposed that. Sites is an international agreement between governments. Now, of course, 185. The convention entered into force in 1975 and India became the 25th party. Okay. Now, it has three appendic appendicitis. It lists, it lists species that are the most endangered. Examples include, when you come to the one, appendix one, examples include Gorillas, sea turtles, most lady slipper orchids. They are threatened with extinction and sites prohibit international trade in specimen. Unless and until it is for a, any scientific reason, they are banned. Of these species, except when the purpose of the import is not commercial, for instance, for scientific research. And appendix 2, it lists species that are not necessarily now threatened, but if, if they are left free, they will get extinct. Is closely, it is, this trade is controlled. If it is not controlled in the coming years, they will become extinct. Now they are threatened. So whenever you are writing the mains, if you know about these uh, appendices, etc., then your answer will be in a fair manner. It will be more supportive. It also includes so-called look-alike species. Species whose specimens in trade look like those of species listed for Conservation region. Third one, it is a list of species included at the request of the party that already regulates trade in the species, like India is requesting the turtle. Okay? Yes. Of course, Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve wins two, two times two. Award for Dublin Tiger Population, we have discussed. Just to remember, just to remind you, I am saying that. And, uh, only for two minutes, I will go through this. The Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve in Tamil Nadu has won the prestigious T Cross to award for doubling the tiger population since dawn chair. Bardia National Park, Nepal, was also jointly conferred the award for doubling its population of bird tigers. We have discussed. It may appear in the statements. Then that's all. That's all with regard to this. This award is given away by Conservation Assured Tiger Standards 
Ponan Flora International Global Tiger Forum. It is a combination of many organizations. Uttar Pradesh Pilibit Tiger Reserve in 2020 was awarded the first T by T cross to award for having doubled its tiger population from 25 tigers to 65 in 2018. Though it is old, it is better to remember. You can remember this. Uh, Pilibit is a parliamentary constituency. Who is the MP of Pilibit? Who is the MP of Pilibit? In, in that way, you have to remember. Anybody? If I am not wrong, it is Sanjay Gandhi. If I am not wrong. Okay? Yes. Now, cool roof policy Telangana. Earlier Telangana, any state has introduced this policy? Before this, any state government has initiated such kind of policy? No. Telangana is the first state to initiate this. You know, even they have made a law. So cool roof, cool roof technology. Actually, what we will do, we will coat the roof with any reflecting surface. Before making this law, also many people used to coat this paint to their rooftop yes we used to do that since maybe 20 or 25 years definitely the temperature inside will reduce no doubt in it and even in our ancient days we had what you say uh, pottery pottery made roofs in telangana they are called as penkitillu penkitillu and now even we can place the solar panels automatically two way damaka one side we can uh, get the power, other side we can reduce the temperature inside. So it is one of the good steps taken by the Telangana government. The Telangana government in India has announced a full roof policy for buildings requiring all government, non-residential and commercial buildings to implement cool roofs which are designed to be heat resilient and energy sufficient. Energy sufficient by going for the solar panels. Automatically, if you increase the power uh, price, everybody will go for the solar panel. And even for apartments, the government should prescribe to have their own power plant, solar power uh, uh, cells or panels, such that at least common area uh, can be um, used. Okay? Yes. Aim. The policy aims to make buildings thermally comfortable and heat resilient. Reduce energy consumption, no doubt in it. If you reduce energy consumption, see when the temperature uh, is less automatically, I mean, uh, for less time, AC will run. Afterwards, it will get cut off. Automatically, you will save the power. Even you can also save the greenhouse gases. Now, and control carbon dioxide emissions. The cool roof technology is expected to reduce indoor temperatures by 2 to 4 degrees centigrade compared to traditional roofs and save 20% in energy costs. Of course, roofing solutions for India. So, as you are having the TSPSC mains exam in the coming days after the completion of prelims, as it is a unique initiative made by the Telangana government, you may expect a question. Roofing solutions, cool roof coatings. The, I mean, generally, the items which are reflective, like lime, I mean, lime, coating of lime, it is reflective. And even there are few, I mean, substances which are fluorescent, they will reflect more. Now, tiling solutions, so we have to go for white tiles, so they will, I mean, reflect back the sun rays. Now, metal roofs coated with the shining uh, surface, they will also reflect. Next, uh, 
అర్థన్ పాట్ ఇన్సులేషన్ సిస్టమ్ వి ఇన్ తెలంగాణ ఇట్ కాల్ ఇట్ యాజ్ ద పెంకుటి లూప్ ఇఫ్ యూ గో టు సిద్ధిపేట్ ఎర్లియర్ వీస్ టు సి సచ్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ హౌజెస్ ఈవెన్ దర్ ఆల్సో ఫ్యాక్టరీస్ yes now going for gardens on the top you can grow the garden so no issue we will have a plastic coating thin film above that we will put the soil and we will grow like this it is also two way dhamaka you can get the um, products and also temperature will also decrease see solar panels temperature will decrease and also we can generate the power now you know sonal solar panel based uh, roof toppings we are getting in the market so there is no need of any ordinary sheets the sheet the sheet it be, itself will have the solar panels so you can cover your uh, roof of your house and also generate the power yes knight of the legion of honor which person in india got this award knight of the legion of honor which person got this award in india and it is given by which country so nobody so in spite of uh, updating current affairs daily nobody will study and even nobody will write the current affairs exams also okay france it is given by france but which person in india got this award very popular family one of and they are the founders of htl htl hcl tech hcl tech is one of the software company hcl tech shiv nadar here the person is kiran nadar for a for establishing a paint museum one at delhi other at the noida yes honored by french ambassador awarded for contribution to the field of art her commitment to providing greater access to culture both nationally and internationally and her leading role in fostering indo-french cultural ties nadar chairperson of kiran nadar museum of art a philanthropic initiative in art the trustee of shiv nadar foundation they are the founders of the hcl tech company okay yes this, this exhibition was brought to india as a part of bonjour india 2022 a six months cultural festival organized by france across india as a present for india's 75th independence anniversary anniversary sorry now next is the nagri nagri dubraj rice nagri dubraj rice recently given recently given gi tag this rice belong to which state see nowadays they are very much interested in chutneys rotis and this kind of things yes chhattisgarh nagri dubraj rice the geographical indication registry has granted chhattisgarh's aromatic rice nagri dubraj a geographical indication tag facilitating the brand to get a unique identity and a wide market it is like basmati of course nowadays it is said that people are spraying some scents for the smell yes they are spraying some aromatic compounds and you will see the smell
Yes, good girls. It is produced by a women's self-help group, Ma Durga Swasat Swasahat Swasahayata Sam Samuh Swasahayata Samuh Self-help group. The grain finds reference in Valmiki Ramayana. Yes, this grain is uh, having mention in the Valmiki Ramayana. Yes, of course. Even in our Vedas, there is mention of rice, brihi, sali, tanduli. Okay? And it is indigenous variety and has small grains. It is very soft to eat after cooking. As it is an item of eating, try to remember. And even tomorrow is Sunday. You people anyhow, anyhow cook the biryanis. Yes. It is also called as Basmati of Chhattisgarh. Previously, zira pool rice, also from Chhattisgarh, was granted a GI tag in 2019. Dubraj is the second brand to get the GI tag. Now, Indian Justice Report. It is nothing but how the states are performing as far as uh, I am delivering the justice. The report initiated by Tata Trust in 2009 is a first of its kind national periodic report that ranks the capacity of states to deliver justice. It assesses the capacity of four core pillars of the justice, justice system. Police. Why police? Because if police will not submit the first information report, if they will not file the FR, courts cannot do anything. Condition of prisons. And uh, judiciary, it includes the number of judges, whether they are sufficient or very less. If the number is very less, they cannot discharge their duties in a fair manner because overburdened duties and they cannot uh, dispose the cases in time. And legal aid, especially for all, and also underprivileged in particular. And which state got the first rank? Karnataka. Karnataka got the first rank. Yes. So score out of 10, first Karnataka, second Tamil Nadu. Even try to remember Telangana, which is in third place. And the score is along with the Tamil Nadu. And Gujarat, followed by Andhra Pradesh. Okay? Yes. And you know, the state of UPH is the lowest rank. 18th among mid-sized and large states. And you know, nowadays, uh, UP, police and mafia clashes. Okay? Yes. The report brings together otherwise... Soil dot on the four pillars, four pillars, police. Every state has statutorily mandated quota for SCST and OBC. In the police, only Karnataka has, has been able to fulfill these reservations. Other states, they were unable to fulfill. And even, even women quota is also very less in other states. Now, when you come to the um, judiciary, judge vacancy. All courts in India work with the less judge, uh, judges, except the High Court of Sikkim and the District Court in Chandigarh. Leaving this, all courts are functioning with less number of judges. So, try to remember Sikkim. And even uh, the quota of SCST is not up to the mark. And case clearance rate, which state ranks top in case clearance, in case clearance, which state? In case clearance, Kerala tops. Among the 18 large and mid-sized states, only Kerala could achieve case clearance rates of 100% and more at both high court and subordinate courts level. And other, again, other, other things. What is HSRC? State Human Rights Commission. Total number of pending cases across all 25 states. 44% national average and even they are having the vacancies. 3,312 cases are pending. Thousands of cases are pending. So no, uh, no address of human rights in a right time. No CCTVs, only few states. And even uh, you are having uh, pre-extension of the um, I mean legal services, very less. And the prisons, 
there are two states where share of under trials is more than 60%. States where share of under trials is more than 60%. Means states by UTs, not states. India is not having therapeutic states. States by UTs. More than 60% of unattrial prisoners. That is a common problem in India. Who are unattrial prisoners? They are only accused. There is, there is only prima facie. There is no final judgment. And even we have discussed why those people are not getting the bails because of lack of uh, that bonds, guarantee bonds. See, now yesterday, Bandi Sanjay was released. With 25 or 20 or 25,000 rupees of uh, deposit and uh, two members giving the guarantee. So, because of these reasons and police not filing the FR in, in time, the number of vulnerable prisoners are increasing. <laughs> of course. Now, India could become the world's second largest solar PV manufacturer by 2026, which is first, which is first country to have. Uh, to uh, to uh, to produce uh, more solar photovoltaic panels it is china <laughs> and again what is the problem with india and china and if you, if you compare so actually in china a low labor cost and the second thing is the companies will spend more for the r and d research and development when they spend more for R&D automatically, they will get the output in a fair manner, more efficiently. Of course, in India also, um, government is encouraging these manufacturers by, by giving them a PLI scheme. What is the full form of PLI? Um, a product linked incentive schemes. Okay. Now, the problem is the... Uh, Dump, what do you say, the byproducts of the solar photovoltaic cells manufacturing units is hazardous to health. Now it has become a, uh, I mean, a concern where we have to dispose, how we have to dispose. India could become the world's second largest solar PV manufacturer by 26. According to a new report, India will become self-sufficient and will be the second largest photovoltaic manufacturing country after China by 2026. 110 gigawatts of solar PV model capacity is set to come online in India. No issue. Now, initiatives taken by the Indian government, favorable policy, environment like the PLI, that is production linked incentive schemes. Now, challenges for India policy instability. Policy instability will come when the government changes. Until the same government is there, no question of any policy change. We have seen. When Indira Gandhi was defeated in 1977, um, um, I mean, Murad came to power. And they even, they will stop the plan also. Fire plan also they will stop. And even they will also give new industrial policy. Just opposing the, uh, I mean, ideology of uh, Indira Gandhi. That should, have, that should not happen. To compete for dominance in both quality and scale in the global PV model market means our manufacturing uh, uh, item should have the global presence. If it is having good quality, then we can compete with the China. Not only quality, we have to give them at a competitive price. You know, China will give because of two two things. One is R and D. Second is cheap labor. Now we have to. I am less reliant on China, but it is a tough task. Reliance on China for upstream components of PV modules such as polysilicon and ingots. Ingots come away first. Okay. You know what is upstream? It is the raw material side. It is called as the upstream for the industry. And marketing side, it is called as the downstream. Marketing of finished goods, it is called as downstream. Raw material side, it is called as the upstream. Now, India's current major PV export markets, US and Europe, are ramping up their own PV manufacturing capability. So in future, they may not purchase. And even in the last class, last of our, I mean, I mean routine classes, we have discussed. India's exports uh, valued at $750 billion. 
and the highest taker was USA. And lessons to be learned from China. Of course, just now I told you, government is uh, offering policy support. And the second thing is, the capitalists are investing more on R&D, research and development. In Jammu and Kashmir, in one village, they came up with the slogan, Give plastic, take gold. If you give 20 quintals of uh, plastic, they will give gold. 20 quintals means it is not a small thing. Sadibara, a village in South Kashmir's Anantnag district, has launched an innovative and eco-friendly initiative called Give Plastic and Take Gold. The schemes offer a gold coin as a reward to anyone who collects 20 quintals of plastic weight. At least what they will do, they will join together and start collecting. At least they will not throw that plastic outside. On one fine day, it may become 20 quintals. All the villagers come together and they will sell, the, um, I mean, they will hand over and they will take the gold fine and sell it in the market and uh, I mean distribute among them. So after this, so villagers could not see any plastic cover in the village. It is a good initiative. Within 15 days of starting the campaign, the village was declared plastic free. The initiative has gained popularity and has been adopted by other panchayats. Now actually, Lokpal and Lokayukta. Lokpal at uh, central level and Lokayukta at state level. So they are uh, authorized to deal with the corruption. But it is said that many complaints are disposed without any action on that particular officer or any public representative. A parliamentary panel report pointed out that Lokpal disposed of 68% of corruption complaints against public servants without any action in the last four years. So, in spite of uh, complaining, they are not taking the action. Of course, it is a report. Only three complaints were fully investigated. Nearly 90% of complaints were not in the prescribed format, hence rejected. See, they are showing more importance for the format not the reality 90 percent of complaints were not in the prescribed and hence rejected see many people will be literate they don't know the format so it is how flaws are uh, made uh, more valuable than law in india if these kind of agencies are not working in a fair manner then how can a common man will get the justice now, corruption in India at all levels is increasing like anything. Even a small officer, if any ACB raids their house, crores of rupees are unearthed. Okay? Yes. Lokpal and Lokayukta. The Lokpal of India is India's first anti-corruption body instituted in 2019 to, to investigate complaints against public functionaries including the Prime Minister. So the Lokpal Act was passed in 2013. The his first Lokpal, Justice Pinagni Chandra Ghosh, was appointed in 2019 along with eight other members. Lokpal at central level, Lokayukta at state level. So Lokayukta is uh, established by the state laws. It is the reason why many states, Lokayuktas are not having power. Like uh, states like Karnataka is having strong Lokayukta. Maybe one month ago or two months ago, a MLA was uh, caught uh, with one floor of bribe and even he was also arrested in course of time. And of course, now India and Malaysia, they had agreement to trade in the Indian rupee. So we will not have any impact of fluctuation of dollars. Especially we will get the palm oil from the Malaysia and even many other things also. Okay. Malaysia is the third largest trading partner of India in the ASEAN region after Singapore and Indonesia. First is Singapore, second is Indonesia, third is Malaysia. Now, what is Manufacturing Purchasing Manager Index? Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index. So, it is a survey, survey to assess the economy, whether it is expanding or contracting. It is basically survey. They will ask the consumers, what is your opinion in the coming month? 
which item you want to purchase. Based on that, they will analyze whether the uh, economy will expand in coming days or contract. If the index is more than 50, it is expanding. Economy will expand. If it is less than 50, it will contract. India's manufacturing sector expanded at a three-time high, driven by resilience in demand, growth in factory adders, and easing input cost pressures. Earlier, what happened? Input costs were high. Now, it is easing automatically. Survey has revealed that PMI has increased. It is a private survey-based measure that asks respondents about changes in their perception of key business variables compared to the previous month. So, last month, you, you have spent money on the one particular item. What you are going to do in the next month? How will be the price of vegetables? How will be the economy? It is purely survey. Provides information about current and future business conditions for decision makers, analysts and investors who investors, including the Monetary Policy Committee of RBI. So in last day, the stance was neutral. They have not uh, increased the interest rate. Why they have not increased the interest rate? One reason is the collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank. <laughs> of course, we cannot compare our Indian banks with the SPB, but still, again, even when you come to the inflation, actually it is easing. Even government can reduce the price of crude oil. When crude oil price was $130 in the international market, we got petrol at 110 Now it is $84, again 110 So there is a scope, there is a cushion to decrease the crude oil prices. So maybe before the election, they may reduce. Who knows? Suddenly they will crash the prices and you people will feel happy. Calculated separately for manufacturing and service sector. Then a composite index is constructed. 0 to 100. Score above 50 indicates expansion. Below 50 denotes contraction. And 50, just 50, indicates no change. Released at the start of every month. Every month. Especially China, Japan investors are particular about this. Because their economies are more organized. India is having good economy, but most of our economy is in the unorganized sector. Published by Japanese firm Nikki, but compiled by HS Market for over 40 economies worldwide. Try to remember this. Now, anti-dumping probe into import of uh, sodium cyanide. What is the meaning of dumping? What is the meaning of dumping? Dumping means, suppose, say, a country X. If it sells a commodity in the country Y at a far less than the market value which it sold in the X or their own country, then it is called as dumping. Suppose the item say A is sold in the X country at 10 rupees for understanding purpose. The same country it is selling the, that item in the Y at 9 rupees. This is called as the dumping. So to counter, to Minimize that impact. What we will do? We will go for the levying of the anti-dumping duty. So, I mean, so government is probing whether the sodium cyanide is dumped into India. So, cyanide, sodium cyanide is used in manufacture of fertilizers and also many things. Okay. It is the meaning of the dumping and uh, dumping duty. What is dumping? The goods are exported by a country to a foreign country at a price lower than the price charged in its own home market. Legal under WTO rules unless it can be shown to have negative effects. It is legal unless it is, it is, it is um, uh, we have to prove that it is having negative impact on our country, on domestic producers in the importing country. The tariff imposed by a domestic government on foreign imports at a price lower than the domestic market price. It is called as the anti-dumping duty. We will we will levy. Sometimes even even they are not dumping even if they are selling the I mean commodity for more price in India. At that time our government will impose a tax to save the indigenous uh, producers. Suppose take the example of steel. If steel is dumped into India by Japan but of course if uh, in Japan it is 10 rupees 
they are selling it for 11 rupees in India. But still, to save our indigenous people, they will levy a tax that is called as the countervailing tax. Countervailing tax. Please try to demarcate the dumping duty and countervailing. Now, again, here it is their countervailing duty. Authority administering Director General of Trade Re Directorate General of Trade Remedies under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry is the authority. About sodium, sodium cyanide, it is a white crystalline odorless solid or powder. It releases hydrogen cyanide gas, a highly toxic chemical asphyxiant that interferes with the body's ability to use oxygen. You know, if you consume that, you will be away from this market. Sodium cyanide is used for the extraction of gold and silver. That is very important from their respective ores. Manufacturing insecticide, dyes, pigments, and bulk drugs. But now we use very less for the gold because we are having very less gold mines. India has initiated an anti dumping probe into imports of poisonous chemical sodium cyanide from China, the EU, Japan, and Korea, following a complaint by domestic players. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.